right, welcome back. Dementia is one of the most feared diseases of our time. And about 50% of Canadians currently living with dementia have never received a formal medical diagnosis for their condition. Unbelievably. Well, thankfully, our next guest says there are updates to the research on dementia and lifestyle changes that can help. Mm -hmm. So here to tell us more is one of the country's leading neuroscientists, especially in this space, Dr. Saskia Sivananthan. Welcome to the show, doctor. So Thanks for having, having me. me. Thank you. First of all, I'm so glad we're having this conversation because it impacts so many Canadians, but I'm going to be very transparent. It is my biggest fear. Mm -hmm. um, and to start this conversation, I want to talk about the misconceptions about this disease because you say dementia is one of the world's largest but least understood crisis. Why is that? Well, first of all, you and 63% of Canadians are concerned about dementia, so you're not the only one. But let's take a step back, because dementia is actually an umbrella term. It's not like it's not unlike saying cancer. There are actually 100 diseases under that umbrella that make up dementia. So Alzheimer's disease is the most common, the one you hear about the most, but there are others as well. So for example, frontal temporal dementia, which is a type of dementia that impacts people when they're younger, sometimes in their 50s. The other thing about dementias mm -hmm. is there are reversible ones. So sometimes it could be certain deficiencies that are causing symptoms of dementia. Uh, and then finally, you can also um, do certain things to be able to change your lifestyle to impact your overall risk. So if you're ever concerned or worried, go in and speak to your physician. Okay, I already feel better, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> we all know that uh, perhaps forgetfulness is one of the top things that many of us are worried about, but that's just one of many symptoms. What are other ones? Yeah, so there are 10 symptoms, but I'll talk about three because memory loss, forgetfulness is the one we all know, mm -hmm. but it's not always the one that presents first. So sometimes language loss is mm -hmm. another that can come up uh, where common words that you should remember, you seem to be forgetting or the person's replacing. Mm -hmm. Another one is changes in mood or behavior. The person is different. Their personality seems to be changing. Mm -hmm. That's another one to look for. Another is disorientation. Mm. Uh, so doing things, familiar tasks that you might have been able to do usually are now uh, are now not so easy. Uh, and then there are more that uh, you can access online as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is, for someone who's at home perhaps watching and a little bit nervous and um, thinking maybe I do have dementia, what is the difference between forgetfulness and dementia? Mm -hmm. I get asked this all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about disorientation as an example, mm -hmm. right? I always forget where I park my car. I can't remember where I've left it, and okay. so then I'm looking for it. That's normal, you know, it's a different environment where you might be parking your car, and so you're gonna be looking for that. Mm -hmm. But let's say you drive to your sister's house all the time, and suddenly you mm -hmm. can't remember how to get there. Mm -hmm. That's something to watch for. Another could be language loss. We talked about this. so. I might be a bit nervous today, so I might forget a word or two that I normally would be using, but, but this is a different environment. This is like, um, for dementia, let's say the person can't remember the word kettle anymore. Mm -hmm. And so now they're gonna be saying, can you put that thing on that you know boils the water? Like kettle is a common word that you should be remembering. These are the sorts of things. They're different from your regular forgetfulness. As you age, we are going to get, we're gonna be a little bit forgetful, mm -hmm. but dementia is quite different. Okay. So what are the future projections of people people with, with dementia now? Right. So there are three things to, to really be looking for in our future projections. So right now, there are just over half a million Canadians who are living with dementia. But by 2050, so that's 25 years from now, we're projecting 1.7 million Canadians who will be living with dementia. Wow. And for each person living with dementia, there's also a caregiver or a care partner, at least one, if not more. Mm -hmm. The second is with that shift as well in 25 years, there's also a shift in the demographics of who will be living with dementia. So Canada's got you know different, we've got uh, changes in our immigration policies. Mm -hmm. And so actually what we're seeing is, is there'll be more people of Asian descent, up to 25% who'll be living with dementia 25 years from now. Whereas previously and currently, it's primarily people from European descent. Mm -hmm. And then the third piece, is that we know women are more impacted by dementia, but by 2050, almost two thirds of people who'll be living with dementia mm. will be women. And then of wow. course, women are also often caregivers. Wow. wow. Those are big numbers. Okay, yeah. well, the topic certainly became top of mind for many when the news broke out about actor Chris Hemsworth uh, while he was filming his National Geographic show, Limitless. He was told he had a genetic risk for developing dementia. So tell us, how much of a role does genetics play in dementia? So genetics actually plays a 
relatively small role um, because for, in terms of directly inheriting dementia, mm -hmm. there are three genes that are linked. And if you have those genes, then you are most likely to get dementia, but you would know it because you'd have lots of family members who'd have developed dementia and they develop it quite young. In Chris Hemsworth's case though, mm -hmm. what he has is an increased risk of dementia. Okay. So there are about 20 genes related to that. But the good news around that is, is that while you might be at increased risk, mm -hmm. there are lifestyle changes that you can make to reduce your overall risk. And so that was part of what he was also doing in that show, Limitless. Yeah, which PS is so good. I you know. You gotta watch it. Yes. You gotta watch it. Okay, I love when we can tell people what they can do mm -hmm. right now to reduce their risk. And these are lifestyle changes we can all do. So what are some of them? Yeah, so a lot of these are risk factors that we've heard about that cut across other diseases. So mm -hmm. diabetes, hypertension, heart, um, heart health, your diet, it's important. If you can change your diet to make it more of a Mediterranean diet is what we usually refer to. And that's things like increasing your fish intake, healthier oils, grains, those are the sorts of things. Physical activity is huge. There's really good evidence to show that increasing your physical activity, even five to 10 minutes a day more, mm -hmm. can have a really good impact long term. But there are other types of risk factors as well that are specifically linked to dementia. So things like sleep, making sure that you're getting a better quality of sleep mm -hmm. and quantity of sleep. And then again, hearing loss is another one. As we age, hearing becomes an issue and there's good evidence now to show that they're linked. So get your hearing checked and then deal with other chronic diseases that you might have. Go speak to your physician, get them checked out and managed as much as you can. There are 14 of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's more information online. If you go to the Alzheimer's Society, I'm sure you'd be able to find it as well. Okay. And are there any drug therapies that are available yet mm. for this? Okay. So I think this is where we're at this turning point right now because mm. for almost 20 years, there weren't any new drugs that were coming onto the market for dementia. So everything that did exist and currently still even in Canada are symptomatic. So they don't actually try to get at the underlying cause of dementia. Mm -hmm. But if you've been reading the news in the past year or so, you'll see that there are some that are starting to come out. I'd say they're the first class of drugs that are called disease modifying. So they're trying to get at the underlying cause of dementia. Okay. Um, and there are also new drugs that are starting to, there are actually a hundred that are currently being tested in clinical trials. Mm -hmm. But if you want to access any of them, you have to be diagnosed with dementia. And so this is where that earlier statistic, people are scared and afraid to go forward. But if you, the sooner you go in and get tested, the better you can put some supports in place for yourself. Oh, Saskia, thank you so much for this very important conversation. You've eased my nerves and anxiety about it so much. Thank you so much. Stay with us. Well, thanks for sharing your crucial information. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.